Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to APU Industrial Career Life webinar session. My name is Miet from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation, APU, and I'm your host today for the session. Today is our third day of the webinar. For those who have missed out our previous session, please feel free to watch the replay at our YouTube channel. Our webinar series cover in the field of AI and big data, cybersecurity, engineering, psychology, creative design, fintech, digital marketing, and many more. We will also have upcoming session later for fireside chat with APU champions. While waiting for more people to join our live session today, I would like to invite you to join our APU eOpen Day. Our counselors are ready to guide you through all the pathway available for your further studies after SPN, IGCIC, UEC, and etc. For more information and updates, please visit to our website at www.apu.edu.my and follow our Facebook page. Today, we are proud to have Mr. Jack Lai and Mr. Harsha Rao from our School of Design and Media with us to tell you more on ecosystem of creative industry, animation, visual effects, industrial design, and digital advertising. If you have any questions later on, everyone, please feel free to drop your questions at our common area. Welcome, Mr. Jack and Mr. Harsha. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, Mr. Jack and Mr. Hasha, over to you now. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. A very good evening to all of you, and uh, welcome to our career seminar on the ecosystem of the creative industry. This career seminar is brought to you by the School of Media Arts and Design uh, in the Asia Pacific University. The session will look into the entire ecosystem of the creative industry, from art to technology-based. You'll be able to find out what are the possible solutions, creative skills, 
can provide in various industries. The recent COVID-19 pandemic is an unfortunate event, definitely. And I'm sure it's affected all of us. However, it has also opened up a brand new world for more creative opportunities. This is especially true in the creative industry as well. Come and find out as we go through today on how you can pick up these skills and to which industries you can apply to as well. To introduce myself, sorry. My name is Harsha Rao. I am a lecturer here at Asia Pacific University. I am also the program leader for the digital advertising program at the School of Media Art and Design. With me today is uh, Mr. Jack Lai. Mr. Jack Lai, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Jack. I'm the lecturer under the School of Media Arts and Design, just like what Mr. Harsha is. So I'm teaching an animations and specific modules under the animation and visual effect program and I'm also a program leader that looks over the animations and diploma course. All right so I think we could start our sessions today by first explore into how big is the creative industry. So let's first ask the questions on how big is the industry right now. We are constantly exposed to a different influence by the creative industry if you take a look around you, so it can easily more than five or ten objects that are basically a creation from the creative industry itself, including a laptops or the phone that you are currently looking at, the furniture you are currently sitting on, as well as the last movie that you watched, the song or the podcast that you have listened, or the last ads that is basically popping into your social media, just like Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. So whether you like it or not, the creative industry is present in our daily life. Can I move to the next slide, please? So here is the broad pictures of the creative industry they are currently in. So if you have to basically categorize the creative industry into a specific categories, there will be the four main area that drive the creative economy, namely the media, function creations, cultural heritage, as well as the arts. So this is an overview of the subcategories which falls under the umbrella of the creative industry itself. Can I move to the next? Typically, so people may view the creative industry as something to do with paintings, arts, craft, as well as music. Or some will associate the creative industry to different areas, for example, like fashion, advertising, games, animations, and even performing arts. So the subset of area like the media and the functional creation itself is actually involved a bigger or even a more complex network of the different creative people itself. Next, please. So the media sector is basically providing us with the daily entertainments. So it includes the videos and animations that we watch, the radio, the broadcasting, and the games that we play, as well as the publishing news media that which have been gone digitally in the recent year. And this sector is also comprised in the most complex structure because it's involved a large team of people to basically develop the work. And because of this, the creative industry is also the most lucrative sectors under the creative economy itself. So the next, I'll pass on to Mr. Hasha. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jack. So um, I would like to cover some of the various functional creations of these various industries as well. We can start off with the product design industry. Everything that you see around you in your home, such as household items, um, the things that you use to cook your food, the things that you use to uh, you know, cut your bread and so on and so forth, all those things encompass the sector of pro product design. Uh, the places where you sit, like the furniture that you use at home, that is also part of product design. Uh, this also includes commercial equipment, which you might see in places like factories and as well as offices, right? Um, the, the second sector that I would like to cover is advertising. And advertising plays a very important role in how products are actually being uh, sold to people. Uh, from the packaging of the product itself, which catches your attention when you visit a shopping mall or even when you visit a grocery store, or even when you actually search for a product online. Usually the package is probably the first thing that you see. There's also things like flyers, posters, as well as billboards, which actually are part of the um, traditional media or traditional advertising. And these are still very relevant today as they're still popularly used by various different advertising uh, industries. 
The next one would be social media adverts. And I think most of us know how popular social media adverts are right now. Um, every time you're surfing the internet or you're browsing your Facebook or scrolling through your Instagram feeds, you will definitely be looking at social media advertising. And it plays a very important role in actually uh, encouraging people to take, keep an eye on a product, get interested in a product, and also create awareness about the product before they actually purchase that product itself. Fashion and jewelry is still very, very popular. And this too falls under the categories of product design where uh, clothing and fashion come hand in hand, um, especially in terms of designing them. Uh, we also have things like accessories as well as safety with style. And finally, we have software. Um, software would include things like your software that you run on your computer, as well as the apps that you run on your phone. We have a lot of different types of software that we work with, such as lifestyle applications that keep track of our day-to-day, -day, give us notifications. Um, there's also things like websites, which we browse on a daily basis when we want to find information. And all this is encompassed by the term UI UX, which stands for User Interface User Experience. And this is probably the the most important aspects of functional creation. So let's put it this way. This part of the sector is embedded into our daily lives, regardless if we need it or not. We want to surround ourselves with beautiful things. It's, there's no doubt about it, you know, the, from the watches that we wear, from the phones that we carry and so on. Industrial design and manufacturing are closely connected because they come hand in hand. Product designers and electrical engineers are the best marriage for all your electrical products. One person is designing them, coming up with the best looking this, uh, product, and the other person is actually manufacturing these great products that you want to actually buy. Even if we don't need it, advertising will be there to give it, to get us to just buy things sometimes. Uh, but that's how things are. And everyone wants to get the very best things that, that's available in the market right now because it, it, you know, it works for your lifestyle. It's suitable for your needs, wants, and desires. So advertising plays an important role in actually creating this sort of awareness as well. A little bit more on advertising. And advertising encompasses various different areas, such as graphic design, which is basically your visual communication, how you design things like posters, uh, flyers, magazine covers, billboards, which is part of the out-of-home out advertising industry. And I would say uh, graphic design and advertising is not really a new sector. It's been around for a very, very long time. Um, the other things that you might see is things like packaging design, which I spoke about just now, which is probably the first thing you see when you buy certain products off a shelf, perhaps. Branding also plays a very important role because every great brand out there has an amazing branding strategy that they have planned and created and articulated over the course of many, many years. Campaigns are very, very popular right now. There are so many campaigns out there. These campaigns can either be in the form of digital as well as offline or even online or offline campaigns. Social media platforms, as I mentioned just now, still play a very important role. And of course, with the pandemic, online shop shopping has become a norm and almost everyone is probably buying things online, either on place platforms such as Lazada, Shopee, and so on as well. So advertising can come in various different forms and they have actually in influenced you either subtly or slapped you right in the face by giving you exactly what you want in terms of the information, in terms of the creatively designed advertising as well. The next area I would like to talk a little bit about would be the industrial design area. And industrial design has branched out to other manufacturing sectors as well. It has combined traditional and digital technologies together. You can take a look at an example of your digital clock that you probably have. Um, either you're wearing a digital watch or a clock that's hanging on your wall. You'll still find digital hands or on the faces of these clocks instead of just numbers. And uh, a lot of us might own things like smartwatches or the Apple iWatch, which are actually digital products. They do have a physical object itself, but they have a digital interface and also a digital system that's running within it. Toys are no longer just toys. They are more made for learning right now as well. You might look at things like robotics and a lot of these toys that are designed for learning are all designed by people from the industrial design area as well.
We also have things like furniture design, which I, which I was speaking about a little bit just now. And of course, furniture design is no longer, a chair is, may not just be a chair anymore. It could be so much more. We have to think about things like ergonomics. We have to think about functionality and also the form factor of it. What people want, what kind of materials people want, what kind of materials work for your, uh, your home, and also the kind of design that goes into it. All this plays a part in the decision making that you have when you're actually buying furniture. Furthermore, automotive design uh, is also a very important part of the ecosystem because um, you know most of us own cars right now, and uh, cars come in various different types of designs as well. Uh, some people like sports cars, some people like SUVs, some people like uh, cars that are more built for families, some people prefer sedans. All these are designed by designers, and they're designed with an idea in mind. Nothing is designed for fun. Everything is designed for a reason. And finally, we also can talk a little bit about sustainable design because this is very important right now in the world today. Designing products that are sustainable means that we are also catering to the ecosystem as well as nature itself, making sure that the products are uh, continuously usable and they're also recyclable perhaps. The other areas include things like interior design, which is, of course, your living spaces. And of course, space design and ergonomics play a very important role here in both, uh, not just in automotive products, as well as interior sector too. Um, IoT products are basically products that are all constantly connected to the internet. Take, for example, your smartwatches or your tablets or even your fridge. Some, some manufacturers right now have things like smart fridges, which are constantly connected to the internet, sharing information with a particular server and then delivering that information to you as well. So the last part would be the 3D printing and also rapid prototyping industries, which is actually becoming more and more prominent today as more and more designers want to produce products at a very hyper fast pace. They want to design and test products almost immediately. So by having things like 3D pr printing and rapid prototyping, it means that an idea can be, be a creation almost instantly as well. The audio video production sector has definitely evolved a lot and Malaysia's own film industry has grown immensely. We have a lot of different Malaysian industry uh, based films such as Pascal, Dukon, the Lee Chong Wei film, uh, Guang, and these are all films that were locally made and they have a mark in the international market as well. Uh, Malaysia has gone a long way in creating great movies and has definitely created a massive impact in the industry. There's even been uh, episodes of certain Netflix series, as you can see on our screen here, which is called Ghost Bright, which was actually filmed uh, by a pool of Malaysian crew members as well. More and more co-productions are occurring in Malaysia because of the the climate of Malaysia itself. There's so much creativity here in Malaysia and there's so much demand for this creativity. For example, China does a lot of commercials and TV series productions in Malaysia during the winter. Uh, this is actually true because Malaysia has the you know a great weather all throughout the year, you know, and a lot of companies want to actually come to Malaysia and do their filming here because of that reason itself. The crew in Malaysia can also converse in languages such as Mandarin, which makes it very easy for them to interact with an international platform as well. So communication becomes more smoother and also more easier. So various different areas of audio production is in play in our industry, such as television series, animation series, which is very, very popular right now, and we'll cover that shortly as well. Movies, documentaries, commercials, corporate videos, as well as music videos too. If you look here, you could see a typical network that involves various different sectors in the creative industry. The creative industry always works with a client most of the time, okay? The client is probably the most important person in the creative industry because they determine what type of project they require, they determine what is the requirements, they determine what are the deliverables as well most of the time. So you could take, for example, a scenario of introducing a new product into a particular market. Just to produce and market this new item will involve various different people, not just one or two people. It involves a huge group of people, usually an entire team of people, all right? So if you think about a production of a commercial, it will involve an agency, an agency being an advertising agency who may come up with a strategy and idea for this 
television or even video commercial. The production house would then actually take the information that's being given by the agency and then think of the best way to actually film this particular production. They would have to think about who they want to have in the production, the actors, the cinematographers, the crew, and so on and so forth as well. And these are people mainly involved in the shooting of this particular commercial. The post-production would then involve people who do things like editing of the film, or even the commercial, as mentioned just now, the compositing of the work, adding things like visual effects, adding things like animations, as well as motion graphics too. And they may even hire separate animation studios to handle different parts of these products as well, uh, productions as well. Sorry about that. So as you can see here, the client is then connected to the agency who then connects with the post uh, production studios, the production houses, the audio production who, who are then in charge of things like music and also uh, musical scores for these. And we also may work with places like animation studios who would then create the animations for us. On the other side of the spectrum, we have media spaces and channels such as social media channels where um, these clients then, then can approach the agencies to suggest and recommend best places to actually run these advertising commercials. They would be able to determine if the best space would be social media like Facebook, Instagram, or having a website or various other different platforms as well. And they could also run things like events and campaigns, especially things like online as well as offline campaigns, which are very, very popular today as well. And of course, one of the another area that I do want to talk a little bit about would be the wardrobe and costume design, because these uh, industries are also directly connect, connect, connected to the production houses, because they are the ones who determine what are the most appropriate costumes and wardrobes for the particular advertisement as well. A typical network, as mentioned just now, uh, you could see here, they bridge various different industries together uh, and they bridge different teams with the end user. We have the management side of things and the management side would definitely be in charge of things like the finance in terms of uh, making sure the right amount of money is being invested into the particular project. The sales and marketing teams, which would then uh, decide and also determine which would be the best way or even method for them to actually um, launch that particular product. And then we also have stakeholders the stakeholders being the people in charge of um, stakeholding the various uh, projects and so on. Next, we have engineers. The engineers would actually be in charge of actually production and mechanical and also electronic, electrical as well as electronic engineering, architecture, and also bioengineering. The engineers are usually the people who are mainly working in making sure that the projects are done at the appropriate manner and also making sure that the, the designs are, the designs that are being provided by the designs are being developed in the right way. Hasha, I think you would like to share the slide again because I think, okay, sorry. I think it's disconnected. Mm. Okay. Apologies on that. Thank you very much for letting me know. All right, yep. sorry about that. Oh, sorry about the technical error there. I hope now my screen is visible again. So as I was talking about the engineers just now, we can move on to the designers. And this is the main area of uh, coverage today. As designers, designers might be working on things like the software, which mainly would include the front end of the software, the user interfaces of the software. Um, they might be in charge of creating the interfaces of the applications that we use, the, the, the buttons that we click, the interfaces that we navigate through, and so on as well. Um, designers would also work on things like interior design, as we spoke about just now. Uh, landscape design could be either for things like your animations, your visual effects, and so on. Advertising also would play an uh, important role, and advertising industries also hire designers to handle different types of design requirements set by various clients. And of course, finally, as mentioned just now, we have the area of graphic design, which covers visual communication. 
So another, another example I want to give you is if you look at a smartwatch, for example, it requires the designer to come up with the physical watch itself. The graphic designer would come up with beautiful graphics and icons for the watch. Then we have the software programmer who would then code it together so that it would work well with the phone application that is being connected to. Then we have the electrical and mechanical engineers who then need to look at the internal components and get the watch working as well. For better security features, fingerprint technologies might also become a common component for most personal items as well. And of course, finally, we have advertising who would then come in to find ways to promote this particular product, create a very customized packaging that will require um, a lot of thought into it because then there's a whole unboxing experience of buying that product, taking it home, opening it up, looking at it and putting it on and then starting it up for the very first time. That creates a very, very amazing feeling. And that is the entire process of design. So the next thing that I want to talk about would be the media sector itself. The media sector and the functional creations will actually merge together when on a movie settings, for example, or a movie set. This includes things like building of a set and expands to the fashion design in terms of what people on the set would wear, in terms of what the actors will be wearing on the set, and also could even encompass the industrial design sector where they could even specialize in creating very, very complex or complicated costumes, which have things like LED displays, lighting, RGB lighting, um, various different mechanical systems in place as well, as well as things like IOTs within the, the wearable technologies too. And now we come to something that's very, very uh, important, and I would say it's on everybody's mind. How exactly has COVID-19 impacted the creative industry itself? Well, definitely it has impacted the industry. I would say it has caused a dent in certain areas of the creative economy, but there's definitely a need for the creative industry because the creative industry still plays a very, very important role and there's no way around it. Problems equal to opportunities. That's something that you really, 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 really need to remember, all right? Because when you think about uh, things like the coronavirus or even COVID-19, there's so much awareness out there. And this awareness is being designed by designers. Uh, things like vaccination programs, things like um, SOPs that are being delivered. All this information is being designed in attractive manner so that it catches people's attention. And it makes them understand the information in a very easy manner as well. Public design spaces have definitely changed. Um, how we interact with people may have changed as well. So um, how do we move around right now uh, when things have changed and uh, everyone's vaccinated, do you think that it'll change? I'm very sure it would change. And how do you get the right ambience of spaces? And this is the role of a designer in the future as well. The other thing that I want to highlight on is the digital content development itself. You might know that QR codes, applications, um, contact tracing has become a norm right now. And there's become so much consumption of this as well. Not only that, we are consuming so much more entertainment as well today. Uh, we're using more apps. We're probably streaming more content as well. And there's also been an increase in digital learning throughout the years of the pandemic. Furthermore. Uh, you can look at some statistics here uh, and you can see that things have changed a lot. And especially during the MCO and the lockdown period, our media consumption has definitely increased uh, tremendously, I would say. People are definitely sharing a lot more videos. I think the TikTok craze has gotten, you know, it's blown up right now. Everyone's probably on TikTok. Everyone's sharing videos. Everyone's becoming a streamer, a content producer in the comfort of their own home as well. Right. And all this is about finding ways to be creative from the comfort of your own home. There's been an increase of things like infographics as well to summarize important news updates that's also being shared by the governments of the world today. Social media has definitely increased as well. More and more people are interacting online with their friends and families. There's been a huge influx of 
social media activity, which means that it creates another opportunity for brands to then advertise on social media platforms as well. Um, because there's more people on social media, it means that brands can now get more eyeball views from their advertising. Um, production companies can then publish videos on social media, and this will also create more traction for the advertise, sorry, for the video productions, as well as uh, various different types of media that's being shared today as well. Of course, COVID-19 has also uh, increased the, the number of uh, time or more time of uh, spent on devices. People are spending more time on their smartphones, mobile devices, downloading way more apps than they used to. And of course, uh, they're consuming more digital content as well, right? So they're using more lifestyle applications such as um, fitness applications uh, when they want to, you know, keep fit at home, perhaps. Um, a lot of people are also do getting into photography right now. So there are more and more applications being used to take great photo uh, photos and also edit these photos from your apps uh, and also from your phone itself. Of course, video gaming has not been left behind. Video games are even more popular right now with things like online gaming, uh, game consoles becoming more and more popular. And of course, it creates a bigger opportunity here for designers who actually want to go into the industry of game design as well. As you can see here, social media has definitely increased. Online games, as I mentioned just now, has of course increased as well. People are definitely streaming more content online through uh, platforms such as Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, and various other online streaming networks. There's also been an increase in lifestyle applications. There's been an increase in music streaming as well. I'm sure most of you are familiar with things like Spotify, and definitely many, many more people are using it today as well. Um, there's also been an increase in video sharing, as mentioned just now, in terms of TikTok, and also things like online shopping, uh, because that has become a norm today. So 20 years ago, if we actually wanted to get access to content or home entertainment, it would be very difficult because we'd have to actually depend on the television networks. We'd have to turn on the TV, find a channel, and then hope that the channel is playing something we actually want to watch. We didn't have the ability to curate that information. We didn't have the ability to have an on-demand style of entertainment. Of course, then we had things like Astro, which gives, uh, which gave us a lot more um, different varieties of information. But of course, now with streaming, there's unlimited entertainment in your fingertips. If you feel like watching a movie, all you need to do is go and find that movie on Netflix. If you feel like watching a particular episode of a TV show, it's that easy. Just go there, find that episode, and that's all. That's all you need to do. It is so much more easier right now and it's so much more accessible and also there's so much more opportunities for content creators as well because the landscape has evolved. I will now pass it on to Mr. Jack who will be talking a little bit about the content creators as well. Thank you, Hasha, for the great sharing. So I believe from what Mr. Hasha has shared, okay, we have basically gotten a lot of insights on how is this um, creative industry and how is the ecosystem basically looks like or what is basically covers. However, regardless the technology out there, what is three really makes the platforms unique is or is basically the content and also the personalized experience from the tools itself. So the content over here is still the king. So we try to think about Netflix platform, how does it look like without a good drama or good movie or an Apple Watch without a personalized design? Will you buy it or not? Would you go into it? Will you spend money on it? So the content of the creation itself is still the key that we are looking at. This means we still need a lot of manpower or workforce in order for us to generate that greater amount of content. Hence, under the creative industry ecosystem, we as the content creator basically play a significant role in creating the wholesome experience to the user itself. And that leads me to the next topic. Since the market requires so much of the content, what would be the most demanded job out there in the creative industry? So there will be a series of um, job positions they will be looking at. So there's a lot of different 
hands-on hands creative job available out there. For example, the one that we're most um, familiar with, which is graphic design, the few of it that is highlighted in yellow. Right. And then we also have a 2D and 3D animators, or if you are in the audio visual productions, then we can evolve in the editor, either it's an audio editor or a video editor, as well as the one that is more famous now is the UI and UX designer. For example, you take the Apple Watch. So try imagine if the interface design or the user interface design itself is not interesting or is not appealing to the user we were basically not spending money on it as well as the 3d designer or the cat designer which is basically the one who is designing how the apple watch basically looks like so the in industrial designer basically plays plays a very important role in this case over here so besides that besides all these hands-on creative job we also require to have a lot of managerial positions which including producer production coordinators, firm director, as well as the animation director. So all these management um, positions over here is a lot of time is basically cross industry or is cross sector. For example, a director for an animation, it can actually direct a movie because at the end of the day, all the fundamentals of this design or the creative process itself would be the same. All right, next one. So a lot of time, what happens after we finish watching the movie is we will see a series of these credits, a long list of credits that has appears. So also, if you try to imagine, try to think back on Avengers or all the Marvel's movie, what happened is you always have these end credits or the post credit um, trailer is basically to make us stay and look at the credit is because we have to basically give some props to all these manpower or all these different departments that have been basically spent a lot of times and efforts working on the different departments and one movie itself is basically involved a lot of different companies as well as the different projects out there next please okay despite the pandemic situations that we have talked about earlier what are the impacts from the COVID-19 or the pandemics all this creative industry is basically still hiring everyone is working from home a lot of industry have been stopped at the moment however the opportunity for the creative industry is sparking now everything that is impossible to be produced physically we make it possible by creating the content itself for example through animations during this pandemic we can actually see a lot of tv ads or commercial that has been basically converted from the video into an animation versions yeah, the content is still going on and just like the data that have been shared by mr hasha earlier on although we are locked down but the percentage of us consuming the different um, content itself have increased similar things goes to the industrial design as well as the advertising despite working from home and also social distancing so now it's basically given up a lot of opportunity for the designer to basically think ahead how does the future basically looks like? What kind of furniture, what kind of product, or what kind of industrial product that we can basically design for us to basically fit in these pandemic situations over here? All right, so next one. So now we're going to look into a little bit on the in companies in the industry itself. So we will be sharing a few of the examples of course through the data from index on 2018 we have around 350 animation companies specifically in the market itself and i believe now throughout these few years we have basically doubled up the numbers so let's look at a few of the companies out there so the first we have silver n which is basically um mastering in animation production as well as the commercial so moving on we have Anima Point, which is a Finland company and is basically opened up a branch in Malaysia itself. And the companies in Malaysia are basically running by all Malaysians. Next, and we have Lemon Sky, 
which is recently um, collaborate with DreamWorks Studio, and also they are producing a lot of AAA games. So Lemon Sky itself is producing a lot of different IP as well as they are doing a lot of servicing job, especially in the games industry itself. And we have Patient Republic, also another company that is focusing on producing the AAA games, including the asset buildings, the animations, as well as the concept art itself. Next, we have Tao Firms. So Tao Firms is a firm production house. It's basically co-founded by John Hughes. So what happens here is they basically produce a lot of different international movies in Malaysia itself. Moving on. We will have Pixel Post, it's also a post production studio, which is working on a lot of different um, film productions in Malaysia, including the best film effects for Dukun. So it's basically one of the productions by Pixel Post Studio. And also we have VHQ Studio, which is working on a lot of post production works and a lot working on a lot of um, China production as well. Next. And we also have a new setup studio, which is Bandai Namco from Japan. So the, the studio is also start to start up a lot their um, local studio in Malaysia itself. So we can basically see that a lot of um, international companies is basically aiming on the talents that we have in Malaysia. Hence, it's basically open up a lot of opportunity for Malaysians as well as the international markets to basically um, involved in this industry itself. Moving on, we also have Ministry XR, which is um, focusing on the AR, VR, as well as the mixed reality, argument reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. And they are basically setting up uh, studios in Malaysia. And then one of it is basically just right in our, inside our Asia Pacific University. Moving on. This, I'll pass back to Mr. Hasha. Thank you very much, Mr. Jack, for sharing all those interesting companies that are opening up in Malaysia and also have already opened up in Malaysia. So I would like to talk a little bit about the advertising agencies currently operating in Malaysia. And one of the biggest advertising industries would be the Grey Global. Uh, and it's, a, it's actually a global in advertising industry and it's considered as a full service advertising agency because they provide all sorts of services under their roof itself. And the, here's the best part, they do have a agency right here in Malaysia as well. And they're constantly hiring, which means that it's clear that the uh, creative agencies are still hiring in Malaysia as well. Furthermore, we also have ADA, and ADA is actually a data and artificial intelligence company that actually designs and executes integrated digital analytics and marketing solutions. Um, I think right now, data analytics and also advertising kind of come hand in hand. They play a very important part. Data drives creativity, and you need creativity in order to uh, catch people's attention. So you also need that data to actually understand what works. And ADA is a company that actually uh, excels in this particular area. Motorola Solutions is actually based in Penang. And uh, we've actually collaborated with them quite a bit. And um, they mainly handle things like uh, communication equipment. And the, co um, the company actually was founded very, very long time ago, obviously. And uh, they only have two design teams around the world, which actually is in US as well as Malaysia. So they, uh, we, they actually work on a lot of things in regard to product as well as industrial design as well. We also have Expedio Design, who are based in Petaling Jaya, and they are also an industrial design company. Their services actually include things like strategic design, industrial design, product engineering, rapid prototyping, product commercialization, strategic brand identity systems, innovative strategy and discovery workshops, as well as product development for prevention of infectious diseases as well. Next, we have more design from Subang. And um, more design focuses on putting style in every household. They focus on the idea of pay less with more. And their business started with selling um, furniture online itself, right? And now they've actually become the largest, sorry, the largest designer furniture store in Malaysia. And they have four branches, which are in Subang, Johor Bahru, Penang, as well as in Ipoh. Next, we have Stephanie Lighting. 
And this was actually founded by Stephanie Ng Design, who is a multi-award winning industrial design studio from Melbourne itself. And they actually have their headquarters right here in Kuala Lumpur. They offer a wide range of lighting solutions for your residential and commercial applications, as well as bespoke services in home decoration and design, uh, lighting and furniture as well. Next, we have Royal Slango. And I think Royal Slango is probably one of the most popular brands and popular names. And it is definitely a household name. I think most of us know about Royal Slango or even have visited Royal Slango for their tour, for example. Okay, So Royal Slango constantly hires people, especially designers, who are interested in areas such as industrial design because they have over 250 skilled craftspeople and 40 strong in-house design team. Royal Sango has actually expanded the use of pewter, exploring its many possibilities from children's gifts, wine accoutrements, to personal accessories. I remember a few years ago when Royal Slango even created a lightsaber and being a fan of Star Wars, I was so impressed and I really wanted to get my hands on one of those as well. Next, we have Produa. And of course, Produa is also a household name. Uh, Produa is a trans, uh, transportation uh, manufacturer in Malaysia itself. And they actually aim to bring all round mobility to Malaysia. It's actually a partnership between uh, Malaysian corporations as well as Dai Daihatsu Motor Company from Japan. Prodo is actually committed to provide high quality, safe and reliable products as well as services. The headquarters sits in a place called Sungai Cho in Rawang. Uh, and they compromise, uh, comprise of a corporate building, two vehicle manufacturing facilities, a research and development facility with a test track, a distribution stockyard, a part center, a training center, as well as an eco garden and a childcare center as well. Wow, talk about so many things under one roof. And here's the best part. Produa is also constantly hiring designers who are definitely interested in areas such as transport design as well as industrial design. Next, we have Nets Printwork, who are based in Kuala Lumpur as well. And they were actually uh, founded in 1997. And they have more than 20 years experiences to provide not just total eco printing solutions, but also are committed to develop eco products and other innovative eco solutions within our eco office, as well as, as, well as eco factory sites. Uh, Nets Group have set up a brand name called Nets Eco, and the brand focuses on innovative eco brand and creating sustainable uh, civilization by inspiring the sprint of coexistence within the ecology itself as well. Next, we have Kuali which is based in Bangkok. And Kuali is a brand of home accessories, kitchenware, and stationeries. And they're actually known for their high quality products, aesthetic designs of the products, and also the usefulness of their products as well. The designs are mainly done in Thailand itself, but Kuali products and packagings are made of 100% recyclable plastic and recyclable paper as well. They also follow the safety standards of European standards and the brand has, has a very strong environmental conscience as can be seen by its nature team products as well. So in summary, there are many, many different creative agencies currently operating in Malaysia from the areas such as visual effects to animation to industrial design as well as digital advertising as well. So we, we looked at some of them, uh, for example, just now, but like I said, there's many, many more out there as well. And if you're definitely interested in getting into this industry, you could definitely do your own research as well to learn more about the different agencies as well as production houses in this industry. I will pass it on now to Mr. Jack to talk about the skills that is needed in the industry. So we have looked into a lot of different company that is producing different things inside of this creative industry itself. So what type of skills do I need to get into this field? So this is a very large field. So we will get into some general um, skill set that we will be looking into. So generally, as a design skill set that we are always looking at, the of course, the first one will be the hard skill which is the practical skills, for example, drawing techniques, marking, marker renderings, digital illustrations, mock-up creations, prototyping, as well as the video productions, and the software savvy. So what happens is in these um, technologies, 
error what happens is the software it keeps on evolving so as a designer we also have to get hands on onto this different software all right and also besides of the hard skills we also looks into a different communication skills as well as the problem solving skills so in APU in Upbeat or in SOMAT, this is what we actually practice in the classroom. So we are putting the student into a real life situations and for the student to experience the real life working environment. So for them to be industry ready. So in the classroom, we involve a lot of different discussions, presentation, pitching, as well as the hard skills like we talked about earlier, the designing skills, drawing skills, as well as the work in the workshops itself to basically get the first hand experience on how to actually produce the things in the real life. So, and also the series of software that we will be using is the industry standard software and including Tumbum Harmonies for animations, Autodesk Maya for 3D animation, Blender, Nukes, and many more. Of course, not to forget all the Adobe Creative Suits out there. So moving on. Okay. So I think I'll be taking over on the design thinking side of the creative industry as well. So being in the creative industry, you have to remember that design thinking is actually a human-centered cognitive and practical process. It involves various different areas such as empathizing, being able to understand people, ideation to come up with creative ideas, uh, to define where you can figure out what problems are and how, how they're defined, testing, and prototyping, which is actually the creation of the, the product itself. And then we move on to testing, which is actually to test the product and refine the product to make sure it, it is uh, applicable and acceptable by the uh, consumers themselves as well. It is through this iterative process, design students will engage through their studies to develop both creative as well as critical thinking skills. As a designer, we have a design formula. The design formula starts with passion, which is the secret ingredient to get yourself started and sustain in the creative industry. It's also important for you to experiment. Don't be afraid to try new things. Constantly upskill yourself by trying, ex trying and experimenting with different tools, methods, as well as softwares. There are definitely many pathways to cross over to different subsectors of the industry. As uh, a famous cartoon character from Finding Nemo Dory would say, just keep swimming. The next one would be to observe. Develop good observation skills. Just watch everything that is around you. Just look around. Look around you, you will find problems that you can solve with design. And these things can actually inspire you. The more you see, the more expansive your visual library will become as well. And finally, the portfolio itself. Build a good portfolio, gradually be more selective with your works and customize certain works for different purposes as well. And this concludes our sharing session for today. So uh, the future of the creative industry will definitely require designers to work more with technology, especially with everything moving towards digitization. Various sectors such as the book publishing, as well as advertising are already venturing into things like augmented reality and virtual reality integration. This, uh, this needs an immersive experience and it will bring in play various different aspects of design as well. So we at the School of Media Arts and Design have started off with the intentions of cultivating the true spirit of design with technology by infusing traditional art and design skills with software applications while harnessing communication and critical thinking skills as well within our students. With the Industrial Revolution 4.0, we also embrace these exciting challenges ahead to make better things that is better for people to use and also more interesting and also more applicable to what is changing in the market today. So with that, I will conclude our sharing session for today. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much, Mr. Jack, for sharing as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Hashal and Mr. Jack for the great, great session. I think everyone gets to know about the creative industrial better and our School of Media and Arts and Design. Okay, we can see actually a lot of job opportunities out there by sharing uh, through the presentations. Now it's our Q&A session, so everyone please feel free to drop your questions at the common area. 
Okay. Uh, actually, I have a few questions on my hands that uh, I would like to ask. Okay. So a uh, very interesting questions. Like some of the students will ask that, uh, what kind of personalities will be more suitable for design courses? Yeah. Maybe Jack, you can start with your answer, then I can get to mine. <laughs> I, I think there's no right personality. Everyone is basically suitable in the design course itself. The, I think the most interesting, the most important things over here is you must have a passion or you must have a strong interest in the area that you would like to venture into. So it doesn't matter what area is it, the interest I think have to come first. Okay. Because slowly, I believe it will change how you basically react. Okay. Mm. So basically, it's just like uh, what Mr. Hasha mentioned, a designer's formula, right? Mm. It's applicable with passion, experiment, observation, mm. yeah, with portfolio, right? Okay. Yeah, I Thank think you. I would also like to add that uh, you should be open to new things and also be uh, always learning about new things and also looking at different uh, problems in a creative manner as well. I think that's a good personality. Of course, networking plays an important role too, making friends especially. Mm. Ah. So have to expand more and explore more so that Definitely. you can get more creative contents. Okay, thank you. Sometimes you need answer. to get inspired from your okay. peers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, thank you for the answer. And there's another question, like asking like if students are interested to become a graphic designer, will it be suitable for students to go for digital advertising? Okay, that's a good question. I think I'll take on that question. Uh, so graphic design is actually a, a, a very small field which encompasses things like visual communication. So graphic design is more of a skill and digital advertising actually has elements of graphic design. In fact, it has elements of graphic design, motion graphics, film and video production, as well as campaign development. So I would say digital advertising is definitely an opportunity and an option for any student that's interested in graphic design. I see. Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, there's another question by Tiffany. Okay, will there be any exam for design program or it will be 100% on students project? Very, very common question. <laughs> hmm. I, I think normally for the, for the design programs, we usually have uh, in-course projects, which the student will basically have to complete throughout the semester. But there, there's some... Um, um, some of the modules will basically require exam also. I, I believe from the advertising area, there will be some. Mm -hmm. But most of the modules that we're going to have is basically mostly is on a coursework base. Yeah, I think it's important to have a good blend of theory and practical. Mm. So the theory is often measured. Um, theory is often tested using things like exams, but the practicals are often measured using things like hundred percent coursework and also student-based projects. And of course, we we are definitely leaning more towards the practical side of things because practical can be applied in the industry as well. But theory plays an important role nonetheless. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, yeah, and one last question uh, from my side. Okay, uh, for animation graduates, uh, can I go to game production house for job opportunities? What kind of position that I can get? Like, yeah, I think like, like what we discussed early on in the webinar is that all this um, creative industry is actually interconnected. So what happens is, let's say, for example, if I am a animators so i can actually go into either virtual effects industry i can also go into the games industry and industry because at the end of the day what we are doing is actually the same a games character cannot move without animations the characters mm -hmm. in the movie cannot move also without animations so it doesn't matter which industry is basically intercross it's just the same questions as for example whether a virtual effects student are able to cross into the games industry or the animation industry. I can even go to a commercial industry or the advertising industry as well. Hmm. So it's very so flexible. That answer. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so I think that's all for the questions. Um, time is over now. So today the session we're going to end here. So anything that Mr. Hasha or Mr. Jack would like to uh, say? If not, then we are going for the next session. 
Okay, I'd just like to say thank you, every, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and I hope the uh, event was interesting and inspiring as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hasha. Mr. Jack, anything that you would like to say to the audience? I think look forward to more opportunities or for everyone to basically join into the creative industry. It's a very big industry and it's going to be bigger in the next future. So we have to always look forward. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the inspiring uh, webinar today. So yeah, we're going to have a yeah, we're going to have a next session with the topic of a fireside chat uh, with APU champions at eight PM later. All right. So thank you, Mr. Hashao and Mr. Jack. All right. So yeah. Okay. And stay tuned and please stay tuned and follow our Facebook page for more updates. Once again, uh, please come and join our APU e Open Day. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jack and Mr. Hashal for the webinar. All right. Take care and stay safe. Thank you.